In this video, we're going to tackle the question of where do we place our frets on the guitar fretboard in order to have the correct frequencies. So in a previous video, we looked at what the frequencies should be within each of the frets in order to achieve what's now known as the Western Chromatic Scale, but it didn't really tell us where to physically put these frets. So I've, I've, what I've tried to model here in kind of a very primitive form is here's the nut and here's your headstock over on this side and here's the body of the guitar and, and the string is uh, suspended from a point on the bridge to the point on the nut and of course this right here as an open note is what we call the scale length just as a reminder. So the distance from here uh, up to here, this is called the scale length, and that's going to vary by guitar and uh, guitar company. But the question is, where do we put this fret right here? Now, this is uh, maybe just a generalization of, of any fret, but this is, uh, let's think about it, this is the first fret. So do we put it more over here? Do we put it more over here? And what's going to happen if we put it in the wrong place? Well, once we depress this string, right, we push this string down, we're going to produce a frequency, and, and this string will rest on, uh, it'll, it'll kind of look like this, right? This is a very exaggerated form, sorry, more like this. And it'll rest on that fret, and it'll extend to the bridge over here. So depending on the length of this string, that's going to determine the frequency. And as we might know already, if we fret a string somewhere, you know, way over here, and we, we basically bend the string down to rest on this fret and then bounces back up, well, we've really shortened the string from here to here, and so we're going to get a much higher sound. You could try this with a rubber band. Uh, you could put a rubber band on something and then uh, pinch one of the ends and, and try to pluck it and move your finger where you're pinching it, and you'll notice that the vibration occurs over a different uh, region. So shorter regions over uh, with the same tension of vibration will produce higher frequency sounds. So the question is where do we place these? Well, we don't have what we need. We need something more, uh, some sort of formula that will somehow allow us to relate physical length to this uh, abstract concept of frequency. We can't really touch or determine frequency. Now one thing we could do is kind of arbitrarily place frets and uh, get some sort of device, some sort of tuner that allows us to detect what frequency we're playing and then keep moving it until we found the right frequency and that's where we put our fret. But typically guitars have 17 to 21 of them and that's a bad idea, right? So we want something that's going to tell us a little bit more systematically where to place those. Well, something that we know from physics is that the frequency of a the vibration of a string is related to two components, uh, the velocity of the wavelength and the length of the string itself. So here's the frequency of the string, frequency. This is the velocity of the wavelength, which we're not going to need to worry about that because we're going to assume that for a given string that that velocity is, is relatively constant. Um, so we'll call, we'll call that a constant. And then we have the length of the string. So what this mathematical formula will tell us that if we were to hold velocity constant, the relationship between frequency and length is that as length increases, this is a rational function. So let's just for the, without loss of generality, let's say velocity is two, which allows me to reduce this formula to frequency equals one over L. So as you increase L, one divided by L decreases, and that tells us that, um, that as you increase length, you are, you are, uh, d d uh decrease, excuse me, yeah, decreasing frequency. So, uh, when, what we're really doing on the fretboard is uh, we're making the lengths shorter and shorter and shorter, and therefore our frequencies get longer and longer and longer. This is not a time scale, so it's okay to move uh, to the left on the horizontal axis since it represents length. So if we decrease the length of a string, i.e. we fret it closer to the bridge, we are going to get an increase in frequency. So that seems to make intuitive sense because that's what we observe when we physically play that guitar. So we now have two important formulas. The first formula that we derived was the frequency of, a, of, of the note in the kth fret, I'm using k here because we want to make this as general as possible, is the, uh, the, the common ratio or the common factor r raised to the k power times the frequency of the open note, where recall that r is approximately 1.0, uh, I think it was 5, 
1.49, I want to say, 1.0595, excuse me. So if that's rounded to four decimal places. So we can substitute that in for R right there. The second formula that we now have is that the frequency of the note in the kth fret is going to equal the velocity divided by two times the length of the string whenever you depress that string at the kth fret. Okay, well, we need to now put this all together. So we now have formulas that relate length to frequency and uh, that relate uh, the frequency to frequency of the open note. So first thing I want to look at is, uh, again, if we think about this physically on a guitar, this is the scale length from here to here, the point where the string touches over at the, on, uh, over at the bridge to the point where that string touches over on the nut. Okay, so that's just for the open note. And so that right there is what we are going to refer to as L sub zero. And more specifically, because L sub zero is what we call the scale length, we're gonna usually just denote, uh, or most people just denote scale length with just L and they omit the subscript because that's how just how naturally long that point is. As a designer of a guitar, you get to choose your scale length before you build it, but uh, that is something that's fixed. The scale length is fixed. Once you fix it, it's there. Okay, so what I do know is that the length of that uh, is related to its frequency by the form physics formula we just proposed. The frequency of the open note is equal to the velocity, the uh, velocity of the wavelength divided by two times the length of that string. Okay, so the, frequ the open note frequency is going to be related to the length of that uh, open note. So similarly, what I'm going to develop now is the frequency of the note produced at the first fret. So whenever you depress the string right there, uh, that's going to equal similarly the same V, because we're assuming it's constant, divided by two times the length of that string, right? Because now what you've done is you've shortened that string, because now the, the string is touching right there instead of at the nut. Okay, well, uh, it, what do I do know also now from the math of frequencies is that the frequency of the note at fret 1 is equal to the common factor r times the frequency of the note at fret 0. Okay, and so what I can do is I can put these things together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute f1 and I'm going to substitute f0. So that will produce... Uh, let's see, so for F1, I'm going to put in V over 2 times L1 equals R times V over 2 times L0. And the reason this, uh, this is useful now is because the Vs are going to cancel out. If I divide both sides by V, I'm going to be able to get rid of those. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit because what I want to really solve for is how where should L1 be placed? L1, just to be clear here, is the distance from the bridge to the point of contact at the first fret. That right there is L1. L2 will be the distance from here to the bridge. L3 will be the distance from here to the bridge. So we're always uh, referencing the distance to the bridge and so far in this formula. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for L1, and also I can cancel out the 2s, because if I multiply both sides by 2, I'll cancel those out. So, so far, what I have is 1 over L1 equals R times 1 over L0. Okay, well, what I can do now is I can do a little bit of rearranging here algebraically. If I multiply both sides by L1 and L2, I'll multiply by L1 on both sides, and I'll also multiply by L2 on both sides. And what that will allow me to do is do some cancellation, Ooh, not L2, L0, excuse me. What that will allow me to do is to make some cancellation. So the L1 will cancel here. And I'll have L0 equals um, R times, and the L0s will cancel here. So I'll have L0 equals R times L1. And if I want to solve for L1, I just need to divide both sides by R. And so I'm going to end up with L1 equals uh, L0 divided by R, or 1 over R times L0. I prefer to write it as a multiplication rather than a division, because I can see that what I'm doing is there's still a relationship between the lengths. It's, it's a, a factor 
but it's 1 over r multiplied by L0 gives me L1. Note that F1, F1 equals r times F0, but L, the length, is 1 over r times L0. So what does that actually mean? Well, because r is a number that's bigger than 1, right, so it's 1.0595, I have 1 over 1.0595 times this length. Well, what's that going to do? How big is L1 going to be? Well, since I'm taking 1 divided by 1.0595, that's going to be a, a number that's less than 1, and if I take a number less than 1 and multiply it by, let's say, uh, L0, then L1 is going to end up being a smaller number. However, the frequency of the note in the first fret is going to be bigger. So I've decreased the length, going back to our graph here, I've decreased the length in order to increase the frequency. So very valuable thing to note there as well. Well, as you might imagine, if I continue to repeat this process, because I know that, because I know that uh, f k is equal to the uh, factor r to the k times f sub zero, and because I know that the uh, frequency of the kth note is equal to v over two times the length of the string in order produced to produce that kth. Uh, fret frequency. I can now put these together and I can say that, uh, oh, and also I know that F0 is going to equal the scale length or, or V over 2 times L0. I can put these together a little bit more generally. Okay, so for FK I'm going to put in V over 2 LK and for F0 I'm going to put in V over 2 L0. So now we're just doing this more generically instead of doing the first fret in the open note, we're relating any fret to the open note. So uh, finally I'm going to put these together, just like I did in the previous slide, just with slightly different symbols. V over 2 times LK is going to equal R to the K power times V over 2 times L naught. And very similar, very similar process here. Uh, these twos will cancel out, the V's will cancel out, leaving me with 1 over LK equals R to the K times 1 over L naught. And if I do some rearranging here, I will end up with LK is equal to 1 over RK times L naught. Okay. Or you could write this as 1 over R all to the K power because 1 over r to the k power, you can raise both the numerator and denominator to that power, and 1 to raise to any power is going to be 1, and r raised to that power will be r to the k. So two ways you can really write that. So what does this tell me? This tells me that if I, if I want to go back to this, and I want to know where should, let's say, the right here, this is the 12th fret, if I want to know the l sub k, which is the distance from the bridge, to where I should place that 12th fret, if I want to know what that distance right there should be, then I'm going to take, uh, so for L12, I would take 1 over R to the 12th times um, the scale length L sub 0. So in the next video, we'll actually do an example with this where we can determine the placement of that fret uh, based upon this. To put a monkey wrench in the system just a little bit more, we don't ever measure, uh, whenever we're actually slotting our fretboard, i.e. we're cutting the slots into which these metal bars will be placed, we don't measure from the bridge because the neck hasn't been attached to the body yet. We're always measuring from the nut instead of from the bridge. So we've got to sort of invert things. So rather than to know the distance from here to the fret that we're trying to slot, we want to know the distance from here to the fret we're trying to slot. Well, if this distance is L12 right here, and we know that, that this whole thing is L0, that if I do L0 minus L12, that will give me the remaining distance here from the nut to the fret that I want. So a little bit more in one final video where this will all come together and we'll clean things up a bit in that final video. So see you in the next one.